I recently finished building and painting an army of night goblins for the old world, and something I've wanted to add to it since is a unit of stone trolls, which I'm going to do in this video. And because I went for a nostalgic retro look for my night goblins, based on how miniatures were painted in early editions of Warhammer Fantasy, I'm going to be doing the same with my stone trolls. As well, this is going to be an easy to follow step by step guide showing you everything you need to know. So by the end of the video, you'll have the confidence and knowledge to get your own stone trolls painted as well. Welcome to Tabletop Ready. My name's Michael, and I want to show you how to paint some stone trolls in the bright and vibrant retro style of the early Warhammer Fantasy days. I've already done a video showing you how I approach building and painting a Night Goblin army in this early 4th edition fantasy inspired scheme. For this video, I'm going to be painting the newer plastic Drogoff miniatures sticking with the idea of using the more recent Gloom Spike Gits range, but you can apply what I'm showing you to the old metal miniatures as well. But before we get started, I do want to show my appreciation to all the supporters and patrons of Tabletop Ready, because without them, I wouldn't be able to make these videos for you. Another way you can support the channel is simply by liking the videos and leaving me a comment. I really do love hearing about your own hobby, and the content gets out to more people. When building the trolls I chose to fully assemble them as they're pretty big and it's easy to get to most places. The old world is played with units and miniatures on square bases, which you may not have if you're using miniatures from the Age of Sigmar range. For these plastic drug offs you'll need some 40mm square bases, which I've linked in the description along with anything you see me using in this video. And I'll also be showing you all the paints and brushes I use on the screen as I use them. Usually you wouldn't have to worry about how these trolls fit together when placed on the round bases, but we do need to make sure the rain cut when using our square bases. To help with this I fully assembled them first so I can position them before gluing them in place. Once I was happy with how they ranked up, I undercoated them using white scar spray so I could better achieve that bright and vibrant colour we're after. If you need a little extra help getting your miniatures ready for painting, I do have a dedicated video on the channel showing you how I do it. Now that we have our trolls built and undercoated, we can move on to getting them painted, and for this I chose to use contrast paints. In this first section, I'm going to be showing you how we can paint our trolls using contrast paints. I chose to use contrast paints because they're great for achieving that bright and vibrant colour we're after, and they let us get miniatures painted in a shorter amount of time. I'm a huge fan of using the contrast paints. They're very accessible for people, helping us to get our miniatures painted, and they can also be used alongside the general acrylic paints as well, giving us more ways to be creative and achieving more styles and effects. When using contrast paints, we want to avoid going over areas we've already applied the contrast, and we want to use enough to cover areas comfortably. And even though we don't need to thin contrast paints, I do recommend working from a dry palette so we can control how much we have on our brush. Take your time applying the contrast paint, making sure we finish each area or detail before moving on to the next for best results, as the contrast dries pretty quickly. Let's start with any tongues using Volupus Pink, and we can weaken the strength of the colour by thinning the contrast with an equal amount of water, giving us more of a pale pink. For any teeth, bones and rope, we want to use Skeleton Horde. Then after those details, we can use Iron George Yellow for the eyes, we're doing these details first because it's easier to work on our lighter areas first and areas like the tongue are more awkward to get to, helping us make less mistakes later on. When it came to painting the skin, I mixed an equal amount of Telesar Blue and Pilar Glacier together to achieve the colour I'm after. The only areas of the body I didn't use this on are the belly and areas of the head where I wanted it to be a lighter blue. I also applied this contrast mix a second time to get stronger colour. And before we apply our next contrast, we want to define where the blue on our skin ends, using white scar to make these areas look a lot nicer and tidy things up. And once you're happy with how that looks, we can use Pilar Glacier over these lighter areas to give us some definition and bring out the details. It's always worth taking the time to tidy things up and fix any mistakes, because it's going to give our miniatures a better finish once we're done. We're now going to use Azamon Blue on the more rocky texture of the skin, making it darker which helps to make it look less squishy. Now we have the skin done, let's work on getting all the other details painted. 
For the stone clubs and axes we're using Basilicanum Grey. And for the handles let's apply two layers of bowl red helping to give us a richer deeper colour. We can then use Saigor Brown for any materials like the loincloths and any straps. Fingernails and toenails can be painted using Black Legion. These trolls are full of so much detail and really it's just a case of deciding what you want to paint and what colour. Just have fun with it. Now that we have everything painted, you could say these trolls are finished, but I do want to now show you how we can make more of an impact with some highlights. I want to use this section to talk about highlighting and how we can use it to make our miniatures look even better. The idea behind highlighting is to bring out any edges, areas and raised details to draw our attention to them and to make these features stand out more. To help with this we're going to first want a brush we vibe with and know it's up for the task when needed. As well to give you more control when highlighting we want to make sure to thin our paint with an equal amount of water and remove any excess from our brush on some paper towel first to prevent those thick blobby lines. Then when you're ready let's highlight the skin using Blue Horror painting thin lines along edges and raised details. Just take your time doing this and if we need help highlighting and want to know more about how I do it and how to get better at it, I have a dedicated video on the channel showing you how. For me highlighting really does make a difference to the look of our miniatures and it's worth taking the time to really practice and get good at and it's also a good way to practice our brush control and hand eye coordination making us better miniature painters overall. After you've finished highlighting the skin, including all the rocky texture, we can work on highlighting other details in our trolls. The next area to highlight are where we have that lighter skin, and for these areas we're using white scar. And for the red weapon handles and wood, let's use fire dragon bright and raised ridges and edges. Loincloths and straps where we use saigor brown, we can highlight these details using carrick stone. We can then highlight our clubs and axe heads and any other rocks around our trolls with Ulfram Grey. Fingernails and toenails are highlighted with Dawnstone. Now we're done with the highlights, hopefully you can see how they've helped to bring out all those details and features even more. Something else we can do to add some more colour and interest is to paint the ends of the noses with Emperor's Children. The last thing to do for our trolls are those bases which we want to match the rest of our Night Goblin army. For this I mixed an equal amount of warpstone glow and scarsnick green then PVA'd a mixture of flock and static grass. These stone trolls are a great addition to any night goblin army and they've been so much fun to paint adding even more character and colour to an already bright and vibrant looking army. So let's see how they turned out. But before we see the reveal I do want to take a moment to thank Marcin Klebowski, Andrew Draper, Andrew Herman, Stephen Troughton Smith, Jan Schroeder, Jonathan Fitch, Daniel Garner, Stuffles and Jim Boyd who have all recently become supporters or has donated to the channel. Thank you so much. And if you enjoy the content here on Tabletop Ready and want to help support the channel as well you can become a channel member or join my Patreon which not only helps me create this content it also gives you access to our Discord along with access to lots of other perks for as little as £2 a month. And for every tier you'll also get tutorials early and be kept up to date with what I'm up to behind the scenes. Our trolls are now painted and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to get your own painted. I also have a video showing you how I approach building and painting my Night Goblin army, so if you enjoyed this then you'll love that video as well. I really enjoy making these videos and I hope you find them useful. If you do then please let me know by leaving a like and let me know in the comments below. As well make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.